Hi everyone, this is Françoise. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I thought I'd show you how to stop watercolor from bleeding into places you don't want it to go to. Because as I was reviewing the footage for this video, I noticed I was doing a lot of things to prevent or to fix that. It's something I do naturally now because I am used to painting, but I remember how frustrating it was to see watercolor bleeding when I got started with the medium last year. So I think this will help you get past this learning stage quicker if you're in it now. As I get into the nitty gritty of that, I'm also going to show you the painting process for the scenery step by step, so if you feel like following along, you can do that too. To take on this type of project, I'm using my favorite supplies as with most of my paintings, and they're all listed in the description, but here's a quick overview. I'm using this 5x7 sheet of watercolor paper by Arches. I prefer 100% cotton paper, cold pressed, like this one, because it deals with water really well, and we're using quite a bit of water for today's painting. I also like to use masking tape to keep my sheet from moving around as I paint and to create nice borders. I'm using my confetti set by Art Philosophy, and I also use a couple of paintbrushes. For this type of painting, we'll use the wet and wet technique, and I like to have several paintbrushes at hand, as well as a paper towel. The reason for this is that a lot of small accidents happen when things are wet, and I'm going to show you how I use these brushes and paper towel to control where the watercolor bleeds. For the sketch, I'm tracing a line at about one third of the sheet, starting from the bottom. This is really all we need for the sketch in this easy watercolor painting. Before I start, I like to prep my colors. Here we're going to go with common ones like yellow, red, blue, and purple. If you don't have purple, mixing red and blue will do the trick, and if you don't have all the colors, you can very well replace one of those by another, or skip one, it's just fine. For now, my mixes are creamy. They lack a little bit of water, but that's okay because I'm going to add water as I pick each and every one of these colors with a very wet brush. We're going to start with the sky, and for all the colors to blend nicely and leave no harsh lines, I'm going to wet the paper first with clean water, and then I'll apply the colors. That's called the wet and wet technique. My first tip when it comes to stopping watercolors from going where you don't want them to go is to be aware of what areas are wet and what areas are dry. Because what we tend to forget when we start painting is that the paint will only bleed into areas that are wet, even just a little bit. That is very important. If the paper is completely dry, the paint just stops spreading. The problem is that sometimes we don't even realize we wet a certain area of the paper. For instance, here, when I applied the water all over the top part of my sheet, I made sure to keep away from that line I traced, to not touch it with my wet brush, because I can't even count the times I wet a designated area like this one, and without realizing it, by getting a little bit too close to the line I had traced like this one here, some of that water would cross over the line, and that's not even something you'll see just looking at it. The water is there, but you don't see it. You think you were careful, but it's there. When you notice it's there is when you apply the paint and that the paint starts spreading over the line a bit. It's not a big deal, but depending on what colors you're going to apply below this line later, what bled over there may show through. So your painting will look more neat and clean if you remember to stop adding water a few millimeters away from whichever area you don't want stained. This is why when I'm applying my yellow paint, I'm going in with the tip of my brush fitting in this tiny area where I didn't apply any water, and this way, because I'm painting wet on dry there, I am sure to get a very neat line. The paint starts spreading on the side of the line I wanted to go to when it meets the water I applied, and you can see how there is no paint on the other side, how clean it looks. For those of you following the tutorial, I make sure here to leave a few white spots as I'm applying my yellow shade, and I do the same with my red shade now to make it look like there are clouds there. Then I go in with my blue shade and finally purple, and I like to overlap purple a bit onto my blue shade to make the blend look a bit smoother and more natural for a sky. At this point, my paper has started to dry a bit, but it's still wet enough that I can keep adding colors to make the sky more vibrant, so I'm reapplying all the colors with more paint in my brush and less water to make sure they look vibrant enough when they dry, since watercolors always dry lighter than what they look like when they're wet. My second tip to control how the paint spreads is to use a clean and damp brush when your goal is to soften the area where the paint bleeds. I'm going to show you that right now. I'm trying to make an impression of clouds now with horizontal streaks of red paint. 
And you see that when I'm overlapping my red shade over my yellow shade to make those clouds, it bleeds quite a bit, or at least a bit more than I wanted it to. I wanted it to look like a line, and it doesn't. So to fix that, and it's something I do a lot, it's become natural now. I clean my brush, or I pick up a new one that's clean, and I soak up any excess water from that brush using a paper towel. I dab it on the paper towel a few times. What we want is a clean brush that's just damp, not dry or almost dry, not soaked up with water either. I use that brush to soften the edges of the horizontal streaks I just made. Since my brush is a bit more dry than the paper is, it's going to soak up the paint that's spreading from the paper. I'm removing that humidity from the paper in that area, and as a result, the paint stops spreading there and you get that soft edge. Now I know that as a beginner, it's not easy at first to know how wet your brush should be, how wet the paper really is, and so on. It's tough at first, but if you keep practicing for sure, you're going to be able to tell after a while, and it's going to come easy to you to fix this kind of mistake. You just have to start, give it a try, and it will come. To make it easier, I edit this footage to show you how to know if the brush you're using to soak up the paint that spreads too much has the right amount of humidity in it or not. Three things can happen when you want to soften an edge with a clean and damp brush like I did here. One, your brush has just the right amount of humidity and the edge is softened and that's it, that's what we wanted. Two, your brush is too wet and you see a bloom forming where you were trying to soften the edge. That means your paper is less wet than your brush is and the extra water you're adding is pushing the paint away, creating that bloom. So you'll need to dab this brush in a paper towel to make it drier and fix that. 3. Your brush is way too dry, and instead of softening that edge, you notice you're lifting all the paint there, and the paper shows through. In this case, you'll need to wet your brush a tiny bit more. If this sounds complicated, I suggest to try this little exercise, and as you get more comfortable, painting is going to become a lot easier. Here, I'm done applying my colors again, and I see a bit of the red there, bleeding into that yellow. So I'm using the damp and clean brush technique again, and we're all good. It's how watercolor is. If you stick with it enough to learn to fix and control water a bit more, it becomes easier and it's a great feeling to be able to paint with more confidence. So I really encourage you to keep practicing if you're struggling. Which again is completely normal because after all, it's not an easy medium to work with. But once you get it, it's going to become faster to paint and it's going to become such a great pleasure. It's well worth the effort. My third tip to avoid watercolor to bleed into unwanted places is to make sure your paper has dried completely whether you're going to paint another layer on top or if you paint near an area you just worked on. It's the case here since I'm painting the sea now, below the line this time. To make sure the sky and sea don't bleed into each other, I use a heat gun to speed up the drying time and you can use a hair dryer or wait it out if you prefer. Again here, I wet everything underneath the line this time and I avoid wetting the area near the line. This way I'm sure my watercolors won't go stain the sky which is finished painting because remember, the sky is dry so the paints won't bleed into each other. But the area where the sea is is wet so if I happen to wet a little bit of my sky, some of the paint from the sea will go there and layer on top of the dry sky. I start painting that dry area underneath the line and let it spread towards the bottom now, just like I did when I applied yellow in the sky earlier. And again, this technique works well for me since the separation between sea and sky looks neat. For the sea, I applied mainly red, purple, and some purple that I mixed with black to create darker areas and shadows for the rocks that I'll paint next. Again here, we're going to dry everything and make sure it's completely dry before we even paint those rocks. With the rocks, you're going to see that I use my tips to fix things here and there even though this time I'm working mainly wet on dry because in watercolor, it's really important to know how to balance the quantity of water as long as the paper and or the brush are wet. Here, I didn't want the bottom of my rocks to form a harsh line, so I added a little bit of water underneath each rock on purpose for the black paint to spread in there and emphasize the sense of a shadow. I do that often when I don't want a harsh line and if I notice the paint spreads too much, usually because I added a little bit too much water for it to spread in, I use my second tip which is to soak up some of that extra water with a damp and clean brush to soften the area and help it blend into the background nicely. My fourth tip is similar to tip number two except that here we're not going to control the paint by softening an edge, 
We're going to fix a damp stain and remove it the best we can, also using a clean brush, only this time it's almost dry. Or why not use a piece of paper towel to clean up the stain? That will work just as fine to clean something up. For instance, I made a mistake here, which shows we all make them no matter how much experience we have and that those tips I'm giving you are always going to be useful. I painted the bottom rock in an area where the paper was wet from the rock that's above and the paint spread out and now the rock I'm working on has that odd pointy shape. You can tell the paper was wet but not very wet because it spread just a little bit and stopped. Anyways, to fix it, I'm removing the pointy end with a pretty dry brush this time since I know this is not going to lift color from the dry layer I painted for the sea since it's dry but it will help cleaning the stain I made with a dark paint since that one is still a bit wet. I'm letting my rocks dry before I apply some white gouache on top of each one of them to make them look more dimensional. To avoid a harsh line between the paint and the gouache, I use my tip number two to soften the edges of my gouache is making with a clean and damp brush. I hope this video has helped you get more clear about how to fix stains and paint bleeding in watercolor. If you enjoyed it, please like, share, and comment, and to be notified of my future videos, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. Thanks for watching and see you next time.